Every small town has a history and a story to tell. In Pikeville, Kentucky, a building stands as testament to the city's evolution. The mayor and city commission uh, uh, made downtown a pre preservation area uh, for the historical value. And those uh, venues that have a historical presence and have, whether it's architecturally or whether it's where something happened, uh, such as the old academy building, uh, you know, those buildings deserve to be preserved because of what they meant to the community. The Pikeville City Hall building has changed with the times and kept its value to the region. The building, located in downtown Pikeville, is one of the city's oldest and most used buildings. Throughout its lifetime, it has survived various changes and purposes, always serving a new function whenever it was needed. It was built in 1889. Uh, the Presbyterian Church decided that they needed uh, some higher education in the mountains of eastern Kentucky. So they came in and started this uh, Pikeville Collegiate uh, Academy. From 1948 through uh, 52, here at what we call the Pikeville College Training School, the building that we're in right now. This room, by the way, was the sixth grade room. This is where I went to sixth grade. Miss Barrett was my teacher. Uh, many fond memories of this building and some not so fond. I kicked a football through the principal's window one day and I'll always remember that. That was reinforced with a, a good paddling. Uh, the building itself is a very beautiful uh, brick building. The bricks were made on site uh, and hand fired and uh, built by local uh, craftsmen. It was, had several classrooms which were quite large, had beautiful oak flooring and they had an auditorium which they called the chapel. The commissioner's room used to be our chapel area. We'd go to a church, our chapel, every morning, five days a week. Uh, the old stairway, you can imagine what kids did with the stairway and the banister. The Pikeville Collegiate Institute divided into Pikeville College and the Pikeville College Academy, which occupied this building until the academy closed in 1955. I feel good about it. I look at it every time I pass it and something comes to mind every time I look at it. The building joined the National Register of Historic Places in 1973. At that point, it was being used for art classes, also holding academic classes, various community activities, and was used as a chapel. After many years of neglect, the city of Pikeville restored the building as City Hall. So not only does it uh, stir our memories about the uh, area, but it's being used every day in a very positive way. And the importance of it is, is knowing where you were um, and not forgetting where, where you came from. Um, our community um, was, uh, grew from a lot of different things. From the Civil War era, it uh, grew through coal production. Uh, and a lot of the things that have been preserved is in some way tied to, to, to that. Pikeville, Kentucky has undergone many changes in its lifetime. From a small coal town to the growing city it is today, Pikeville has played a pivotal role in eastern Kentucky. Just as the city has played an important role, the Pikeville City Hall building has played its role in Pike County. In many ways, the Pikeville City Hall building symbolizes the city itself. By looking at Pikeville now, no one could ever imagine that train tracks ran down what is now Hambly Boulevard. For most of the 20th century, Pikeville was a railroad town. Railroad came to Pikeville in uh, 1905. It was the first, and of course, it was built to uh, haul the coal out of this area, which had uh, just started to become uh, a big part of our economy. Railroad, extremely important. Coal was being moved by railroad, which it still is. But the city of Pikeville was a bustling town with coal trucks and uh, people coming to visit doctors or the courthouse. But the tracks, right in the center of everything. In 1903, the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad Company made plans to lay tracks in Pikeville in order to better deliver coal to the outside world and to open up that world to Pike Countyans. 
The railroad's success led to the construction of the C&O Passenger and Baggage Depot in 1923. The access to modern transportation produced an extraordinary growth and development in Pikeville. And uh, it was about 19 and early 20s when this facility behind us was constructed and then they had the passenger trains that came up from Iceland. And uh, you got to remember the only way people traveled then was by rail. Poor roads, hardly no roads at all back in, in, in those times. So the railroad, uh, uh, the railroad and the passenger train was a way of life, not only here but all over America. Because of what the, the, the what these facilities did and serviced, uh, how they serviced our communities was, was very, very important. It's uh, for a community to grow, you have to grow from from within out. And the only way that we could get without was uh, not by horse and buggy anymore, or carriage, which is when the first settlement came in, but by rail. The Passenger Depot was a one-story, seven-bay brick building built in the classical Rivetal style. Just down the block was a smaller baggage terminal built at the same time and in the same style. A large canopy was built between them. Well, I had two functions. One was to uh, promote and, and support the coal industry for coal transportation, and the other was to move uh, passengers uh, around. So it, was, it played a very intricate part of opening up eastern Kentucky to the rest of the nation. And the train would open up and expand the world with excursions to New York City, exotic vacation spots, and even provide access to a presidential candidate. The depot served the community until railroad service was terminated. In the early 1980s, the tracks were removed and a new route bypassing downtown was completed in the cut-through project. Of course, since then, times have changed. The cut-through has come, the railroad has moved. The reason being is, uh, you know, passenger service, though it was profitable in that time, uh, as the years wore along, the uh, bus system, uh, to uh, cut into the uh, railroad passenger uh, uh, service. Uh, it was a little more faster, a little more convenient. Uh, then the uh, automobile uh, really uh, marked the end of the pasture service in uh, eastern Kentucky. Many officials from the city of Pikeville, Pike County, and the Chamber of Commerce wanted to see the historic depot saved. The reason the depot wasn't demolished is it does have a very historical significance because understanding again uh, when Pikeville was constructed and its purpose that it served was the mass transit system for our region. We didn't have and we still don't have commercial air service. Uh, there, when I was growing up there was a Greyhound bus uh, that, uh, that started service in the area, but prior to that, rail was the way that people got around. It's a historic site. Many people have it in their memories. Many people utilized it. Just became a part of what you did. The depot is now on the National Registry of Historic Sites and houses the Southeast Kentucky Chamber of Commerce and the Big Sandy Heritage Museum. As you're driving down US-23, just north of Pikeville, you may have noticed that large old suspension bridge beside the road. It's the Poly Bridge, and there's a lot of history behind it. The Poly Bridge began its long life in 1936 in the middle of the Great Depression. The bridge construction was part of President Franklin D. Roosevelt's Works Progress Administration, or WPA, to help locals find work. My father was O.S. Batten, and he, he was the design person of the Poly Bridge. The uh, Pike Physical Court uh, was the agency responsible for getting him to design the bridge. And the first design was of steel, and the uh, court said they didn't want that. They wanted something that would re require more labor and put people to work. So that's the reason for the stone on each side of the river. Completed in 1940, the Poly Bridge spanned nearly 400 feet across the Levisa Fork of the Big Sandy River. It had only one lane and served as the only bridge at that time to offer access to that part of Pike County. 
course, it was just a one-way bridge uh, when you drove the automobiles across the bridge. It was an, an arch in it, so you couldn't really see the oncoming traffic from the other side until you got over a, a, maybe a, at least a quarter of the way. And that was a, kind of a unique thing. And then, too, you had a little up and down motion when, when the vehicle was on the bridge. That bridge used to be a challenge to all the individuals who went across it, especially in a car coming across the Poly Bridge. Uh, there, it is a swinging bridge. There's no doubt about it. The bridge was featured in Ripley's Believe It or Not as the Bridge to Nowhere. I was in with my family in later years in the 70s in St. Augustine, Florida, and went in Believe It or Not and walked up the stairs, and there was a picture of the Poly Bridge, Pikeville, Kentucky, right in Believe It or Not and it had on the bridge, the bridge to nowhere. The design is similar to other bridges throughout the area, but one feature sets the Poly Bridge apart. It is built of hand-hewn stone from this area. More than 30 suspension bridges were built in eastern Kentucky by the WPA, but the sandstone towers that support the bridge are the only ones of their kind in this area. During its lifetime, the bridge has served many in Pike County, but was the only way to have access to what is now the Poly Edition. Of course, it was important for those people that uh, lived over there and worked over there. It was very important for transportation rather than to go over the ford, through the ford. And if the river was up, of course, they couldn't do that. It was used to uh, a one-lane traffic to go from the main road, US 23, over to a railroad station, the Poly uh, Station, which is only a mile from the Pikeville Station. It used to be an airport over there, an airstrip, before it was moved on to the Calpin area. The bridge wasn't used only for access to the airport or the Poly Edition. That used to be the parking place for all the young people. That you took your girlfriend across the Poly Bridge, and that was before there were so many houses over there. The bridge remained open to vehicular traffic for a long time and provided a growing area with access across the Big Sandy. Its unique design earned it a place on the National Register of Historic Places in 1992. However, new bridges were built and time took its toll on the Poly Bridge. The bridge was shut down to automobile traffic in 2000 and closed to pedestrian traffic a year later. The future looked bleak for the Poly Bridge. Uh, because of the type of, of suspension bridge it is, and it's one of the only type of this suspension bridges that's still left in our part of the country um, for, for safety reasons and also for, uh, uh, I won't say for the durability of the bridge and the, and, and the, the type of construction, having a concrete uh, brick and mortar type bridge was far more safe, easier to commute traffic in and out of, uh, so just basically for convenience purposes. In 2006, the Poly Bridge got a new lease on life. Through the efforts of local and state government, a large grant was awarded for the restoration of the Poly Bridge. The reason the city took the, uh, the project on was because that it had a major historical significance to the area. The condition of the bridge itself was still in great condition other than the wood planks and there used to be a, a side walking pedestrian uh, uh, walkway on the side. Uh, we were able to take that off. It was about a $400,000 project to restore the bridge, so what the city was able to do Instead of spending 400000 we spent about 180000 The way we did that was is we used uh, local contractors. We actually used the fire department uh, and the police department that actually went over and there's a, um, a bolt system that l lowers and raises the cable. So once we took off the gainway, the, the, the walkway on the side of the bridge, the bridge actually tilted to the left uh, very substantially, about went up in the air about four foot. Uh, so we had to have a special type of wrench made. The uh, police department, fire department went over and actually took two large nuts that we had a special type of nut made that goes on the, uh, the very large bolt that where the head uh, wall is and lowered the bolt on one side of the bridge in order to equate or to get the bridge to equal itself out. Uh, then it was just a matter of going in and putting all new wood and uh, treating the wood on the bridge. In 2006, restoration was complete and the bridge was reopened to pedestrian and bicycle traffic. Thanks to many, the Poly Bridge has many bright years ahead of it.
it is important to remember where we came from, what trials our forefathers went through, and how the actions of those before us shape the path that we now travel. I think it's important to keep those things in our lives, especially in small town America. There's a lot of different value in preserving your history, uh, and Pike County has obviously uh, got a lot of it. The Huffman Avenue Historic District includes the City Park, the Methodist Church, the United States Post Office, and the Federal Courthouse. The uh, Federal Building, which includes uh, the Federal Courthouse and Post Office, at that time, uh, Pikeville did not have uh, any construction such as that. These add an important part to the history of uh, Pikeville and Pike County. So those were real landmarks in the city of Pineville, even as I grew up. The post office was built in 1931 and is an example of modified Georgian Flemish architecture with a slate roof. The entrance is guarded by a majestic eagle. With 12 windows and 12 steps, the post office reflects strength and tenacity. The federal courthouse was built in the 1940s, an impressive two-story brick Georgian Revival style building with rectangular windows on the first floor and arched windows on the second. Like any small town, Pikeville is home to many churches. Two were in the Huffman Street District, the First Presbyterian Church and the Pikeville United Methodist Church. If you look at the uh, Methodist Church, which is on Huffman Avenue, the cornerstone will read Methodist Church South. It was before the uh, Southern Methodists and the Northern Methodists united, which I think is rather unique. The Pikeville United Methodist Church was founded in 1845 and moved to various locations until 1911 when they bought the property on Main Street where it's located today. The First Presbyterian Church has since moved to the outskirts of town. I, I belong to what's called the MYF, uh, Methodist Youth Fellowship, but I can remember going in the basement of those church when I belonged to the Explorer Scouts. They held their meetings there. One of the crown jewels in Pikeville is the city park, and over the years it has seen many different uses and neighbors leaving many with memories and stories of their youth. Behind the park at that time, before the cut through went through, the river was down there. And uh, we were forbidden to go near the river, which we did on a regular basis anyway, because that was part of growing up. Growing up, the park wasn't the place it is today. It was a very rough area. Uh, it was an area that you quite honestly didn't venture to at night. So seeing the transformation uh, into becoming a central gathering park for our community to where kids play, uh, people get married, picnics take place, uh, and actually my office is located in the city park, so a lot of government decisions are made. It is the, the heartbeat of our community. Like many places in this part of the country, eastern Kentucky saw its share of bloodshed from feuds and some from war. The city park has a profound connection to both. During the Civil War, uh, uh, James A. Garfield was commissioned as a Brigadier General here in the city park. Uh, it's where uh, the troops encamped. So there was a lot of different things that occurred over the years uh, that gave us our history and our heritage. The Huffman Avenue Historic District is important to Pikeville's history and to its future. For human beings are not creatures of nature. We are inheritors of the history that has made us what we are. Not to know our history is not to know ourselves. <laughs>